Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you this morning. It is for this reason that we come to your house to be fed by you and to hear from you. We ask that, Lord, you bless our time even as we hear your word. We ask that the reason why you brought us to church will be accomplished today. So, sweet spirit of God, we invite you to brood over us. Brood over this service in a very special way. We give you thanks for hearing our prayer this morning. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let us appreciate the praise team. Thank you. great to be here. Praise the Lord. I'm so excited to be here this morning. We want to welcome those watching us online and on TV, wherever you're watching us from. Feel very much at God's presence, even as we worship together. It's great to be here, church. Um, I thank God for the opportunity that he's accorded me this morning to be able to share the word of God. I'm going to be as quick as I can in the interest of time, and I believe God is going to bless us in a very, very special way. Heavenly Father, we also ask that God, you may continue to position us as a church to display your goodness and your love and the character of Christ. We give you thanks, Almighty, in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Please resume your seats very quickly. I've been away on leave. I just came in on Thursday. I thank God for leave. Praise the Lord. Leave is nice. Tell anybody, leave is nice. Yes, I had all the time to do everything, to, to swim and to do everything. Hallelujah. Some of you wonder, does he swim in these clothes? No, hallelujah. But uh, we had a good uh, time. To, I had a very, very good time. Before I get to my sermon, I just want to convert your prayers. Tomorrow I leave for Sudan. For the next one week. Hallelujah. We're going to do ministry uh, in Sudan. Uh, we have two cities, Juba, and uh, we're also going to the Equatoria State for ministry. So we convert your prayers on the same, and it's going to be great for the glory of God. Amen. We are looking at the preeminence of Christ in personal purity, and I'm going to go very quickly uh, from the book of Colossians. I shall be basing my teaching from the book of Colossians chapter 3 from verse 1 to 11. And this is a situation where Paul is reminding the, is reminding the church that, the, that Christ's preeminence should be evident in the, in the, in the, in the, especially in the body of Christ as we pursue purity. And so we're going to look at that portion of scripture. I'm going to go step by step and I believe that God is going to minister to us in a special way. Now, Paul begins by saying that if you are raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. He opens this teaching by talking about if you, for those who have been raised with Christ. Now, signifying that the Colossian church, when Paul was writing this letter to them, he was writing to them them with the belief and faith that they had died to their old lives and have been spiritually resurrected into new life in Christ. So Paul begins to remind the Colossians that new life in Christ is basically marked by the character of seeking the things that are above and not the things of this world. And that is what Paul is talking about here. Allowing the authority, the, 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 the authority of Christ and the lordship of Christ to be so evident as you seek the things that are above. You know, he, Paul writes to them and he tells them, since then you have been raised, set your hearts, set your hearts. And that is where Paul is taking us this morning. That is the reminder that Paul is bringing about. Is your heart set? Where is your heart set? Where is your heart set? When you're talking about the preeminence of Christ in, in, in Christian purity, the supremacy of Christ in, in Christian purity, 
The supremacy of Christ in Christian purity begins with where you've set your heart. Where have you set it? You know, I'm reminded of, 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 of what happens to pilots. I'm not, I'm not one, but I know that by the time this guy uh, gets into the plane and is about to take off, his mind is set. He has already set his mind and he's saying, hey, I am going to this destination. I'm going to this country. I'm going. And all the instruments are set to that, towards that direction. And he knows that if there be any form of digression, it would cost his life. And in the same way, Paul is bringing about something very important here. He's saying, set your hearts. In Christian purity, you must set your hearts. He's telling the Colossians, set your hearts on things that are above. Yesterday, I, I, I saw somebody um, with a magnet and uh, there were these metals around it and when you lifted the magnet, the, the, all the metals just followed up and it just hit me that when your heart is also set on the things that are above, on God's purpose and God's will, you know, you follow up after what God has planned for you and what God has put for you. So Paul is writing to these people and he tells them, set your hearts there on things, on the, on, on the I mean, uh, set your hearts. He, he, I mean, he tells them, seek the things that are above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. And then he continues by saying, set your hearts on things above and not on things on the earth. He's talking about a Christ-centered focus. Set your heart on things above. Let your focus be Christocentric. Christ-centered. I remember when we would read for exams when we were in school. Because your focus is on passing those exams. In our days, we would actually get some basins. For those of you as ancient as I am. Hallelujah. We would get basins and put cold water on that basin. Especially for the sleepy ones who wake up in the morning and you're, do and you're, uh, you're, a, you're a dozer. Hallelujah. Dozers are those who doze. Hallelujah. And we would put our feet on cold water to be awake, to read. Because we are focused. We are focused. We want to pass that, 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 those exams. And when Paul is reading to the Colossians, he's telling them, hey, set your minds on things above. Let your mindset, let, let your life be Christ-focused. And how do you display a, a Christ-focused life? By pursuing what is called Christian purity. A Christ-focused life is a pure life. It's a life that renews its mind day by day through the word of God. Christ-centered. How do you know that you're Christ-centered? It's when people see that you're pursuing purity with all your heart for the glory and honor of God and you're focused to God's assignment for you. Verse 3 says, For you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ who is your life appears, then you will appear with him in glory. Paul is telling the Colossians that you have died. He explains that their old selves is dead. They are no longer living in their old ways, bound by the desires of the flesh. Their life is hid in God. So they are not living in their old ways. Their life is hid in God. I like lives that are hid. The other day I was just thinking, we were just having a conversation with a friend. There was this very big eucalyptus tree where we were standing. And he told me, can you imagine that this tree one time was a seed? This big eucalyptus tree, tall, was once a seed. And then he said, beyond that just being a seed, this tree, this seed of this tree was planted in the ground and was hidden for some time. People walked along that path. Some even trampled on it. Walked on it. Not knowing that the potential of that seed was still on the ground. It 
it was not recognized. It was not acknowledged. It was nowhere to be seen. And then he said this. Today stands this big eucalyptus tree. Because a price was paid by the seed on the ground. A seed that went down and died. A seed that chose not to be recognized. Not to hear people's opinion. But at the end of the day, out of the price that it paid, it now stands as a big eucalyptus tree. Carpenters are just salivating for it. They want to use it. Hit me. That in the same way, our lives need to be hid in Christ. And when your life is so hid in Christ, it's not about you. It's not about the accolades that people give you. You choose to decrease and Christ increases. So that the purity of Christ can be seen in you. And when Christ is, the purity of Christ is seen in you, you as the seed of Abraham, you grow by the grace of God to be mighty, mighty. Why? Because the, you've accepted that my life is hidden in Christ. It's not about me. It's about Christ. It's about Christ. So when Paul is writing to the Colossians, he's telling them, hey guys, you've been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above on, and not on earthly things. Because your life is hidden in Christ. He's just telling them, guys, your life is hidden in Christ. Put your hands on your chest and say, my life is hidden in Christ. When your life is hidden in Christ, it simply means that people don't see you, they see Christ. We are living in a generation that people want to be seen. One of the things that is going on, some of the things that are going on in our country today, people, are, people want to be seen. Can't you see what I've done? Can't you see my achievements? Can't you see that is the rhetoric and that is the talk? But are we able to make up our minds that Christ be seen in us? When Paul writes this letter, he's telling the Colossians, hey, let Christ be seen in us. Verse 5, he says, put to death, therefore, what is earthly in you. Sexual immorality, impurity, uh, 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 passion, evil desire, covetousness, which is idolatry. He gives some examples of habits that Christians need to put to death. Now, to, to put to death is simply a deliberate, decisive action against sin. Put to death. When I was reading this portion, I was reading that's a very strong remark. Put to death. Think about how you kill chicken at home. When you put that chicken to death, you don't want to see any iota of it running around. Hallelujah. I don't know how you'd feel if you go to a restaurant and when you're just about to eat, the chicken jumps out of the bowl. Hallelujah. When you kill that bird, you kill it, Kabisa. You want to make sure it is dead. And when Paul is writing the, to, to, to the Colossians, he's telling them, guys, put these actions to death. Sexual immorality, impurity, passion. Put them all to death. And in our world today, let's put these things to death. The things we struggle with as Christians, that must be put to death. I usually say, somebody was asking me the other day, when you talk about putting things to death, Rev, what, what, what do you talk about? What, what, what do you mean? But this is what I'm actually talking about. I'm saying, when a Christian decides to put these things to death, you are actually saying, God, I want to be, build a, an aura around me to make sure these things 
don't get to me. Because we're living at a time right now that sin has really been promulgated. in Christian purity in your life, if you're going to experience your walk with God in the best way possible, you must be accountable. You must be accountable. I fear people who are not accountable because I know when people decide not to be accountable, they don't want to play according to the rules. I'm trying to imagine if all drivers in this city would decide they don't want to be accountable, what kind of chaos will we have in town? Those that never want to be accountable always have something. You'll always see something. So even as you talk about self-discipline, talk about accountability. If there are things you want to, that you want you to do for God in terms of personal purity, you must be accountable. You must be one who is self-disciplined. And ask the Holy Spirit to fill you and to, and to help you. Because after that scripture, it's another very scary one. Talked about the fact that the wrath of God is revealed on those that decide to be disobedient. And I don't want to go to that in the, in, 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 in the interest of time. Because it's a fact. The wrath of God gets revealed to those that don't follow God. God's order and God's purity. So there are five things I've talked about today and I just want to bring it, bring to your attention. Number one, that you must seek the things that are above. That habitually we must actually focus. Remember what I talked about? Focus. Put your focus on the things of God and the things that are above. Number two, set your minds. Set your minds. You can set your mind. You can set your mind at home. Hallelujah. Ask your neighbor, where is your mind? Or you could be seated there listening to me and your mind is on your neighbor. <laughs> Hello? Ask your neighbor. Don't you let, tell your neighbor, your mind should not be here. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen? Why? Because... Your life is hidden. My prayer is that your life be hidden in God. Your life be hidden. That it's not about you. As this year comes to an end, I'm praying to God. I've, I've begun praying for next year. I've been beginning to pray. I, I, like, I personally do my things very early. And I'm asking God for something so major. I'm asking God for another walk with him that is special, that is unique and that is for his glory that as the eucalyptus tree was planted in the ground and it became to a mighty tree, that God may I be planted in the house of God planted and hidden in there so that it's not about me but about Christ, it's not about you but it's about Christ May God help us to deal with the sins that entangle us. And I want to tell you, the sins, they have been is what viruses are to a computer. What do viruses do to a computer? They slow down the computer. They make the computer hang. And they can even cause the computer to crash. The same way, you know, viruses make sure that the computer does not operate in its fullest potential. And the reason why the church is not operating in full potential like the early church is because of these viruses that we entertain. My prayer.
prayer is that we shall not entertain these viruses. When Paul is writing to the Colossians, he's telling them, deal with these things. And these things we preach in all sins here many, many times. Pastors have come to talk about them. Ministers have come and mentioned things about here. But one of the last things I want to mention before I finish is let's deal with the virus. I want to say, just bow down your heads. Just bow down your heads. I want us to be introspective and think about, think about our lives today. Are there any viruses in your life? What are some of these things that are hindering you your full potential? Some of you have great potential, but those potential is not being utilized because of this sin that entangles us. To some of us, it's a particular sin that entangles us. To others, it is just this life. You find yourself getting into minor things. Are there some viruses in your spirit that you feel God, may you take these viruses from me that I may operate in full potential because that's the prayer I want to make today. I want to ask God to release grace over your life that you may operate in full potential but you must denounce them. While we sit here and you're, and, and, and you're thinking about these things, if you're willing and you're saying, Lord, take this that I am struggling with this habitual sin that I'm struggling with, take this challenge that I'm uh, that, that always brings me down and help me to operate in my full potential. If you are here and you're saying, Rev, I need that kind of a prayer. I want the Holy Spirit to take this out of me. I want to pray with you. Very quickly, just where you're seated, I just want you to raise up one hand by faith as I pray this prayer. God bless you. Just raise those hands. God bless you. God bless you. I will not ask you to stand, but I'll just lead you to, in a prayer together with those watching me online and on TV. I just need you to say this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus. All of us here say, Lord Jesus, this morning, I come to you just as I am. I know that as a Christian, I have been striving to walk with you. But many times I stumble and fall. I get up and I'm hit again and I fall down. I raise my hand in this house because I need your help. Holy Spirit, hold my hand again. Help me to rise above the sins that entangle men. Give me grace to live in purity. Take away all the habitual sins I commit and help me to walk the walk of Christ. Heavenly Father, I came to this church this morning because that is my prayer. And that is my need. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Heavenly Father, I want to pray and ask that you minister to these that have said this prayer. I ask that your blessing be upon each one of them. And I pray that God you'd help us to rise above the pleasures of this world and lead pure lives. All for your glory. Give us grace to be obedient and love you with our hearts. Thank you for hearing and answering our prayer today because we've prayed in Jesus' name.